black people? Mrs. Clinton. Not Ron Paul, Mrs. Clinton. As a matter of fact, Ron Paul, who so many people called racist, wanted to end these things that would have helped the poor community and the black community. Any community that's poor. I don't want to get baited into this color BS. It says the government's drug policies are unequivocally undermined basic civil rights and gutted the constitutional amendments. It's not coincidental that much of the eroding of civil rights in the war on terror came directly from the war on drugs. So the Clinton believes that toting the banner of the issue of the Democrat Party, so-called incoming inequality, will sway the party's voters and lead her to the White House in 2016. Left unmentioned by the corporate media, but not us here at TS, uh, TCV. Is the indisputable fact that Hillary Clinton is a creature of the 1%. In actuality, the 0.01% of the mega wealthy financial and corporate class. She's an elitist. She is bourgeois. And her insincere solutions to the growing political, social, and political problems of America are designed once again to fool voters. Proving that she's part of the problem and then trying to come out of the solution. She's a living Hegelian dialect. If you don't know what it is, look it up. Speaking of Ron Paul, listen to this. The collapsing economy fuels the Baltimore-style riots. Now, when Hillary Clinton says this, it's laughable because Hillary Clinton is part of the problem and part of the cause of it happening. Ron Paul, and you can check the record on this, it's a matter of congressional fact, Ron Paul has always voted against such things. And we could have had him as president. Kit Daniels, the largest and yet underreported factor behind the Baltimore riots is America's poor economy, and it's only going to get worse, according to formal presidential candidate Dr. Ron Paul. We know about the militarization of the police and their overreaction in the drug war, he said Thursday on the Alex Jones Show. We also noticed that some people who are receiving an end of excessive police force and overreacting to it, people can get pretty nervous about that as well. But the big overwhelming thing that drives the problem in the inner city goes back to economics. If we had a thriving economy, the problems in the inner city wouldn't be there. But when you have an entitlement system, Keynesian economics, look up what that is, it's the opposite of Austrian economics, which would work, and the Federal Reserve fixing it up for the rich to get richer and the remaining part of the middle class, the upper middle class that might be remaining, the rich even go after them and try to tax them just to keep this system going. One thing is for sure, we don't know when this is going to end, but it is going to end, Dr. Paul continued. There's never been a paper currency that lasts for an indefinite period of time. They always end. And this one, the U.S. dollar, has gone on for way too long. It's bigger than ever. That's, and that doesn't mean big in a good way. He means falsely inflated. There's never been a fiat currency like the dollar in our world as it has it today. The U.S. economy slowed to a crawl in the first quarter of 15, growing only 0.2% in comparison to 2.2% at the first quarter of 14. There's a huge bubble with the dollar, Dr. Paul told CNBC on April 14th. It's not so much that the dollar is a great currency, it's the fact that nothing else is any better. The fundamentals are a disaster and the economy is in bad shape when you have more than half of the people hardly making ends meet. And that is true. Half the country that's working is paycheck to paycheck. It says, thus it's no coincidence that a rioting in America is going to coincide with a collapsing economy. Absolutely true. Guys, if you can't take any more gloom and doom and death and die, then we're fine. we got two stories left. Um, well, it's, I guess it's still death and destruction here, but it's, uh, it's something that makes a little more sense because, well, at least we're not doing it to ourselves. We're not uh, stealing TVs in the name of a dead man. Dailymail.co.uk and I, I'm on Freddie, Freddie Gray's side, by the way. What, uh, until I hear few, uh, further evidence, uh, Mark Dice alluded that he may have done it. It may have been a self-inflicted injury. I would like more proof on that before I believe it. Um, will a volcanic eruption destroy humanity? Scientists warn that world world must begin to preparing for an explosive global catastrophe. 
Since we know that these have happened throughout all of recorded history, I don't see where it's a bad thing to prepare since we do have the ability in other generations in the past of not. We do have the knowledge to prepare to lessen, not prevent, lessen the damage of these occurrences. Well, listen to this. It says the world is woefully unprepared for the massive volcanic eruption that could kill millions of people and destroy much of modern society. A leading group of scientists have warned. In a new report on the risk posed by natural disasters, experts at the European Science Foundation concluded that a large volcanic eruption eruptions pose the greatest risk to human survival. Um, I don't know if that's true. I think um, uh, the nuclear power plants and the nuclear industry as a whole, including weapons, would be worse. But uh, it seems, you know, again, these have happened all through history, so they obviously have a point here. It says, in a new report on the risks posed by natural disasters, experts at the European Science Foundation concluded that large volcanic eruptions pose the greatest risk. I, again, I don't know. It says, they calculated that there is between a 5 to 10% probability of an explosive eruption large enough to cause huge numbers of death, alter the climate, and poison the atmosphere occurring by the end of the century. And before you say that, uh, that that's not much, um, if you had a ten, a five to ten percent chance of winning a hundred dollars, if you put ten in, you might do that. Is it just a lot more important than a hundred dollars? It says such an eruption would have to be a familiar size to the explosion of Tambora in Sumbawa, Indonesia, in eighteen fifteen, which killed a hundred thousand people. Uh, it said the ash cloud thrown from the eruption reached 26 miles into the atmosphere and triggered temperature changes, and uh, that made for famine and epidemics. It says the scientists warned, however, that rising population levels and increasing reliance on global travel could mean the impacts of a similar eruption would be even worse. Uh, in Timor, it's known as the year without summer, there was so much ash up. Uh, writing in their report, extreme geohazards reducing the disaster risk and increasing resilience, the experts warn that there needs to be an international response to prepare for such a disaster and monitor for similar events. They estimate that it could cost between $500 million and $3.5 billion a year to increase the level of monitoring for catastrophic volcanic eruptions. And this is just another example where common sense would, would rule the day. That is a remarkably low amount of money with a very, very high, 5 to 10% chance that this is going to happen. I just gave to you the amount of money we spend on the war on drugs. If America stopped the war on drugs for one year, they would be able to pay for this. And it would, uh, again, it's happened all through history. But no, we're going to jail people for smoking pot. Friends, that brings us to the dum dee dum dee dum dee of the day, eagnews.com. Illinois high school moves to ban birthday cakes, cupcakes, pizza, and donuts. Danville High School birthday cupcakes and pizza may soon give way to chalkboards and slide rollers. Basically, they're saying that you can't even have birthday parties because it goes against the sanctity and the health of children and all of this BS. And we covered it before. It came up in another article, so I felt like I would mention it. Make sure you call them on this. I'm going to do two dummies because I'm swarmed with them. Check this out. A feminist shutdown prevent rape campaign promoted by the police. Kit Daniels. How stupid. I mean, how genuinely stupid. Police canceled a prevent rape public awareness campaign because feminists claimed that it encouraged victim blaming. Defending yourself and learning how to defend yourself and teaching women how to defend themselves is victim blaming. Idiocy! The campaign by the Sussex UK police featured posters hung on the walls of female restrooms at nightclubs stating that many sexual assaults could be prevented if women stick together during their nights out. Well, guess what? If you have a large group of women and men, just because of the way they're built, are bigger. It's victim blaming to tell them to stick together. How... How does this even... What is wrong with our world? 
It says it's sensible advice to any right-thinking individual. However, the usual array of feminist fundamentalists took great issue with it. Theodore Gumbrell with Return to Kings reported. That's why they're getting the dumb of the damn day. Take issue they did, forcing police to pull the posters all together. So now people are going to get, uh, you know, probably raped because of what the feminists did. It says this kind of messaging, while it can be well-meaning, plays into hugely problematic victim blaming within our society, which can make victims of sexual offenses feel unable to come forward for fear that they will be blamed for what happened. Let me tell this idiot, this is a dumbass British feminist, Laura Bates, I think Master Bates, they told The Guardian. Uh, Laura masturbates, focusing on victim behavior prevents us from placing the blame where it belongs with the perpetual alone, perpetrator alone. Let's all refer to Laura Bates now as Laura masturbates. How's that? Because she just gets herself off by yakking with stupidity. Let me tell you what. I took martial arts because there are, are crazy people in my neighborhood. Look up 44703. Crazy people in my neighborhood. Jumped me my whole life growing up. I, I took martial arts, shout out Victory Asian Arts, to learn how to defend myself. It's not victim blaming. Someone saying, hey Sam, why don't you learn how to fight? That's not blaming me for being the victim. It's teaching me how not to be a victim, you dumbass Laura Masturbates. Glosswitch mother, British feminist, echoed a similar sentiment. We are told to think of ourselves as lap, uh, laptops, as unlocked doors, as open wallets, as property that anyone might take unless locked away safely. That's the way everyone is, you stupid ass. We're all like that. That's why we learn to defend ourselves and learn how to stay in groups, you moron. Even wolves know better than you. It says, of course, it's just like feminists to take offense at a campaign intended to prevent rape because modern-day feminism is more about subjugating men than stopping violence against women. Amen! And this one isn't capitulating. Remember, it was feminists who claimed that allowing female college students to carry concealed handguns on campus for self-defense would devalue sexual assault. Yeah, because if you shoot the rapist, it somehow devalues sexual assault. Blow his nuts off, that's what I say. I'm not being politically correct. It says the argument that guns could help turn the tide on campus sexual assaults implicitly devalues sexual assaults without physical force as part of the problem. No, it doesn't. It just teaches you how to defend yourself in certain situations. Idiot. VOX's Libby Nelson wrote incorrectly. It's feminists who prevent law professors from teaching legal courses on rape. So basically, it's feminism that is making things worse. All it's doing is teaching people to devalue the importance of self-defense because there will always be predators. The best thing you can do is prevent yourself from being one of those swine's victims. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. signing off, brought to you in part by Mike McLaughlin. Go to the Facebook.com, look up the works of Mike McLaughlin, uh, M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N, and you'll find some of the best fiction, non-fiction, political rants that you've ever seen. And if you'd like to help me out, and, uh, again, one of the reasons the studio is down is because uh, one of our listeners, Angela, had donated to us. We're revamping the studio. We ordered a cord for the graphics. The cord is in limbo in China, and it should be here within two weeks. Does it really take two weeks to send something from China? And if so, do we really think that they're going to overtake the U.S. economy? Anyway, we're redoing the whole uh, studio, so that's why you got more of an at-home feel. Guess what? You got the news. You got the commentary, and I'm out. Go to the correct views of Hotmail.com and donate to me. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show, even if China makes that take two weeks.